Many doctors and nurses and others in the healthcare field do wonderful work. They take care of people. I respect their work greatly, and I think you do. But the system itself is in critical condition and in need of fundamental change, not tinkering, but fundamental change. People don't get up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, am I a liberal or am I a conservative? People want to have some assurance that health care will be available for them, that health care will be affordable for them. And that's really what we're talking about, a health care system that will provide care for people and also a health care system that won't bankrupt our country. You're about to see a documentary on the Canadian system. Now, we wouldn't exactly borrow from the Canadian system, but there's much that we can learn, and I think this documentary will be very informative for you. All these people, the young, the old, the rich, the poor, are fully insured for health care because they live in Canada, a country that holds health care to be a right, not a privilege. Canadians are covered by a medical service plan known in some areas as MSP, which is paid for by their taxes. The total cost to Canada per person is about one-third less than in the United States, where access to health care is neither universal nor a right. I've had extensive heart surgery, it never cost me one cent. We hear things about long waiting lists though here. No, that's not true in Ontario, for sure. If you're sick, you're in the hospital, first class care, whether you have private room or whatever. I go to my own doctor, I choose my own doctor, even if I'm unemployed and on welfare, I can stay going to my doctor and it's paid for. Everybody gets the same treatment. Uh, you aren't turned away from a hospital because you don't have a certain type of card. I mean, people never hear of things like that here. Uh, when you have your health care system within the province uh, and even inter-province, I mean, they honor it between provinces, uh, you know, the health care is the same for everybody, basically. I feel that the best aspect of the Canadian health care system is, is its universality. The fact that as a Canadian citizen, as long as you take some responsibility and make sure that you are indeed registered with MSP, which is not a problematic thing to do, as long as you do that, you're guaranteed health care. And that means that if you need uh, open heart surgery, you, that will be covered by MSP. And if, you, and if you have a baby, that will be covered by MSP. It, it's a, and I think it's an excellent system in that way. There's a single payer uh, system, which means that uh, there is only one insurance company, and that's the that's an insurance company run through, although not by, the governments of the various provinces. I bill to the government, to the insurance company. I do not bill the patient. Uh, the patient has no, as I said, no out-of-pocket expenses, and in fact, it's illegal to do extra billing. In the U.S., I had a hard time figuring out um, whether med. The, the, the regulations in Medicaid versus Medicare and one insurance company versus the other insurance company and all of the various um, uh, state and federal regulations. Here there is only one and I think that there's a lot of advantages to that. In Ontario patients receive a health care card when they are born and they receive a number and that's their health care number for life. They get a card, um, they can go to any physician they like they choose their own family physicians or primary care physicians and specialists with the advice of the family doctor. And they have to only give their health care number and then as far as any payment, they're pretty well safe. Everybody, regardless of income, age, station in life, uh, or anything else, has complete coverage for everything that's medically necessary, including uh, some, some kinds of service that are not ordinarily offered unlimited coverage by health care plans. For example, in Ontario, uh, you can have unlimited coverage for psychotherapy. Being an owner of a small art consulting business in Canada, I feel privileged and fortunate not to have to go to work each day and feel concerned about not being covered adequately with health insurance. As a Canadian citizen, we are automatically covered, full coverage, for any sickness. It makes it possible for small business people like myself to remain in business. I was um, covered by the courtesy of the government uh, before I got my first job as an advertising representative uh, after I left high school. So I didn't have to worry about whether I was covered by a health plan or not. 
I have not only the one daughter who's been ill for seven years and has required intensive treatment, we also have another daughter who has a heart defect who's been here at the hospital uh, on several occasions. And with, the, with having two children who are, who are actually quite ill, um, we, we could be seriously in debt. Does anyone ever worry about an illness bankrupting them for, because of the medical costs? Not here. But, but well, <laughs> part of my family uh, lives in the United States, and that is a concern there. Medical bankruptcy is a peculiarly American phenomenon. The notion that the, the catastrophic effects of severe illness, cancer, for example, or, or a stroke that cripples the, you know, the, the uh, principal economic support of a household or something like that, the notion that such a, such a catastrophic event should be compounded by destroying the economic resources of the family or the individual seems to, I think, most of the rest of the world to be barbaric. I'm on the board of Vancouver Persons with AIDS Society, which is a self-help group for people with AIDS. As soon as you have AIDS, you automatically fall into a different category and all your drug costs are covered. Before the introduction of universal uh, single-payer health care in Canada, uh, the proportion of the gross national product uh, that went to health in Canada and the United States was about the same, around 7% back around 1970. Since that time, health care expenditures in the, in the United States have grown at a much greater rate than have health care uh, uh, expenditures in Canada. The major way we save money is administrative costs. You don't have to spend resources deciding whether somebody is insurable or not. Everybody is covered, so you don't spend administrative resources that way. There is a huge administrative saving at the hospital level. Hospitals get a global budget from the provincial government. So they get up front at the beginning of the year, here is what you're going to get to run your hospital, and you have to run it within that amount of money. When you go into an American hospital, every blood test you have, every x-ray, every diagnostic test, uh, everything has to be attributed to a patient who is then subsequently billed for those services. That's a huge administrative burden collecting that information. Most of the money for health care in Canada comes from the federal government. 50% of all of the hospital money and all of the medical services plan money is paid to the province out of the federal government's tax system and the rest is paid by the provincial health system. When you have really one major payer, then you don't spend a lot of your time chasing the dollars. When you have a multiple sources of financial places that you have to go, it takes up a lot of health care dollars in administrative time. If you go to a doctor or hospital, you just have to present the cards? Present the cards and they just punch it into the computer and that's the last you hear of it. So you never see a bill? No, never. And what I can say is that I've been um, pleasantly surprised and, and impressed with the Canadian system. Uh, there are some situations in which patients have to wait for their health care in terms of uh, certain procedures and certain diagnostic studies and that sort of thing. I have not seen any of that that actually impact on the patient's health. Where there may be a problem with long waiting lists in, in BC, it would be, a good example would be a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. There's only four in the city of Vancouver and they uh, cover the whole of BC and they're dealing with all the trauma every day, plus they're dealing with very important um, types of surgery in, in children with major problems. So if you have a child with flat feet that the mother insists that you refer this child to a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, the waiting list, yes, can be six months or eight months. But if you have a child, if, if I have a child that's fallen and I, I've looked at the x-ray and I think that they have a green stick fracture and that it involves the epiphysis, then it's very simple for me to phone up the, the surgeon that's on call that day and say, could you please take a look at this child and they will, they will have a look at it. In Canada, everything is paid for by the state, so even very costly forms of treatment um, are available to everybody. Um, that poses a certain demand on the system, so to some degree, um, if there is from time to time here and there a bit of a logjam in the system, um, I think that's a price that, that many of us are willing to pay. 
the healthcare facilities in Canada and the U.S. are similar enough that I guarantee that I could take a surgeon from a hospital in Houston and put him in an operating room here in Vancouver, uh, take off the blindfold, and he could carry on with the operation without so much as a pause. Uh, the facilities are the same, the, the quality of the instrumentation that the surgeon would have to work with, the support facilities are, to all intents and purposes, identical. In Toronto, there are three major teaching hospitals that do open heart surgery. I'm only familiar with the Toronto Hospital Program, but they have a very large open heart surgery program uh, doing, I believe, in excess of 1,500 uh, uh, what we call pumps a year or procedures which involve uh, the heart-lung machine. He was born three months premature and uh, he weighed one pound nine ounces, so he definitely needed a lot of this technology to even keep him alive. You just sort of can place your entire trust in the staff here. And you know they're giving them the best care that is absolutely possible. And he's going to grow up and be a big boy, thanks to these people and what they can give him. Prenatal care in this country is again covered by MSP. Um, they're allowed, I think, 14 visits throughout the pregnancy that we can bill for. Um, uh, plus, if they need a specialist care, then, then the consultants get paid on top of that. Any woman who comes to a doctor um, will get that, that kind of medical care through a general practitioner and it will be paid for by the government. We have a very organized system of immunization across the country. Everyone is immunized. I mean everyone has the opportunity to be immunized without payment and we highly encourage it and they're encouraged from the day they you know arrive in the hospital to have their babies that this program will be implemented. Our overall health indices uh, will stand up uh, well against any international comparison. If you look at uh, life expectancy uh, at any particular age cohort, uh, infant mortality, um, the whole area of, of uh, comprehensiveness of immunization programs, I mean the, the, the indices are very good. Patient satisfaction with the system is high. Uh, there are flaws in the system, uh, there are cracks in the system, but patients by and large uh, hold their health care system up with a tremendous amount of pride, almost as a sacred trust. Would you mind telling us about what you had to go in the hospital for? Was it your foot or your leg? It was, it, 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 it was a leg, uh, the, the ankle had to be rebuilt because it was entirely smashed. And uh, like I went four times in the hospital, you know, four times the services, everything was quite great. The government is not looking over my shoulder. Uh, the government has a role in paying me and has some concerns around the, the quality of the care that the medical profession provides. Legitimately, they're the representative of, of the population, which are my patients. Uh, but the issues of how I practice medicine are up to the medical associations and to myself individually. In terms of my own practice, I provide the health care that I think personally is necessary. If I decide a person needs surgery, yes, certainly within some confines I, I need to justify it both to myself and to the patient, but I do not need to justify it to a government official. There's no one that's going to turn around and say, you did that laparoscopy, you didn't need to do it. Do you get to choose your own doctor? Yes, I actually have switched doctors about six times in the last four months because I haven't found one I liked. So you have freedom? Yeah. <laughs> any, any different doctor. It's, you can go to as many doctors as you want. My name is Peter Sinclair. No fixed address. Okay. I sleep in a tent. I got a medical card. Okay. So when you walk into a doctor's office or a hospital, are you able to get the care you need? Yes, I am. Canada and the United States both have their poor and homeless people. The difference is that in Canada, they are covered with health insurance and have the same medical care as everyone else. My name is Roy, Roy Carlson. I live in Van, Vancouver, BC. I'm a retired machinist. The way it is now, see, the whole uh, Canada or British Columbia contributes this, see? And the people that are well pay for the people that are sick. The practice of medicine in the United States is skewed according to the economy and to the economic status of the patient. And I'm not willing to give different kinds of, of services to people according to whether or not they can pay. 
It violates my sense of humanity, that's for sure. The care is acceptable to the upper middle class. The system has to be maintained so that the level of care is of that quality that will satisfy them. And it also means that, the, that everyone gets that level of care. I realize that, that the United States is ahead of us in many ways, but I think this is one of the areas where you'll probably follow us eventually. I consider our health system a national treasure. That it's, it's a right we have and it's beautiful, really.